What does his text mean? So frustrating. Maybe he's just not that I into me. She I've me. always been bad How at flirting. How can I get her attention? I'm ready for I marriage. I just want somebody to share my life. Is this a relationship? Modern love made simple. This is Dates and Mates with Damona Hoffman. Hello, lovers. Welcome to Dates and Mates Season 6. This is the place where we are going to demystify modern love, make it simple for you. I'm your host, TV dating expert Damona Hoffman, and I'm here to give you that that real, real advice. The things that I can't talk about on television, I'm talking about here on Dates and Mates. And as always, we are broadcasting live from Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood. And we're live streaming on Facebook, on uh, my Facebook Facebook page, at Damona Hoffman. And we have... We have some new features, in case you haven't gotten caught up with the new season. I have a rotating cast of co-hosts that are joining me. And today, I have someone really special. He's here for his three-peat appearance (laughs) on Dates and Mates. He is known as the relationship scientist, Ryle Sims. And he's a behaviorist, motivational speaker, and neuropsychologist. Basically, like the authority of neuroscience and relationships. And now he's writing his third book series on the neuroscience relationships. And also, good things come in threes, his third time on Dates and Mates. Please give big smooches to Ryle Sims. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a, an interesting topic today. We're going to be talking about real relationship advice and people who have, have been through it. I know you're married, I'm married, and we have two two wonderful married folk joining us, Shannon Kaysen, whose show airs on WBEC Chicago, and his lovely wife, Cindy, who are kind enough to share their their deep, dark secrets and their tips uh, about how to make marriage work in today's today's world. So I love talking to um, couples, and uh, this is going to be a really special show. Let me give you the scoop on what's happening in today's show. We'll be discussing how long your engagement should last and how to get the attention of a guy who's out of your league. Those are the questions that have come to us (laughs) from technically and technically dating from the uh, Textbird app and your questions. But we'll also be handling the headlines of the week, how dating apps could potentially land you a job. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. And how checking email <laughs> after work could be damaging your relationship. Plus, it's been a whiplash dating week for Iggy Azalea. It's been so long since we oh, talked about her on the man. show, but she's back in the headlines, and we'll be man. telling you all about that. But before we tackle the week's news, quick shout out to listener Chanel from North Carolina and Vanessa from Ohio. Hello, ladies. They are on my mailing list, and they emailed me the correct answer to a hidden question in one of my emails this week so they'll both be getting free copies of my book spin your web how to brand yourself for successful online dating i have lots of other giveaways coming up i have books from guests maybe you can give us your book series Uh we can do a little giveaway (laughs) there we have free coaching sessions and other swag but to get the good stuff you need to subscribe to the show and you need to be on my mailing list to know about it you can register by choosing your free e-course on dating or relationships at datesandmates.com so, Producer Thomas, you, you, you're ready now? I'm ready. You're All ready, right. <laughs> Let's do the dish. dating dish. Ryle Sims, can dating apps help you land a job? Oh. Well, <laughs> <laughs> according to ABC News and Good Morning America, turns out a lot of millennials are turning to dating apps to not only find love, but also find work. They did a feature on uh, some freelancers, uh, in particular this one photographer, who realized that dating apps maybe were not finding him a relationship but after being asked to take some photos for not like freaky photos right right just some photos for (laughs) one of his dates then some other people on the shoot were like oh actually he's pretty good and that turned into months of work for him yeah And, you know, I I work with a lot of celebrity clients and Raya is the dating app that that all of the, you know, the muckety mucks in Hollywood tend to use. And a lot of them see people on the dating app that are famous folks that aren't necessarily single. And they say, well, I'm just here for work. Right. Right. Is this blurring the lines? You're the relationship scientist. 
Is this, are we headed in a wrong direction here? Well, um, I guess we do the same thing too when we're on Facebook, right? You know, somebody comes on to your live feed and then you introduce that person. You're like, oh, hey, that's John. Oh, he's a great photographer. Actually, he took a couple of pictures of mine, you know, and then next thing you know, that'll lead to another job too as well. Because the people who are listening are like, oh, wow. So is he really good? And it was like, yeah, he's really good, right? And you end up hiring him, so. Yeah, but um, if you're you're not dating John in the first place, though, it's a right. little bit different when you and John have seen each other naked, and then you're like, well, but come on over to the office, right. because <laughs> you're not a fit for this role, but I have something else right. for you to do. Right, and that's something that you really have to worry about, though, you know, with the fact that you're actually dating the person. Um, it's different if you're actually looking for love, find somebody uh, that you're not interested in, but can help you find a job, right? So then that'll be a difference. But as far as um, on the site and then you're finding love and then you're trying to get work too, and then you end up working together, right? So yeah, you can run down the wrong lane from that way. Here's what I'll say. I definitely disagree yeah. with putting yourself on a dating yeah. app with yeah. the purpose of getting Find a, a job. job that's right. there's apps for that in fact yeah. a lot of the dating app companies now have launched uh, sister apps partner yeah. apps right, that are right. specifically for yeah. business like yeah. bumble has one mm -hmm. um tinder has one tinder for networking one and mentoring right. yeah they're so, adding an addition to it yeah because probably they saw <laughs> that people were using it too much <laughs> exactly. for work and they're like this is this is crazy <laughs> let's start another app exactly. so so i do not recommend going on a dating app for that purpose right. but i always say you got to show up on the dates and yeah. you never know because somebody might end up being not a fit for your romantic life. That's right. But uh, a fit in another way. So right, right. That's that's a good one. Right? There you go. Like, you got to well, stay you know, open minded. We won't really make it as romantic couple, but. I got a job for you. Exactly. So <laughs> if that's the outcome, then great. I'd love to know what you guys think. You can email me your thoughts on uh, at Demona at Demona Hoffman dot com. And while we're talking about email, did you know that mm -hmm. checking your email after work can really do some yeah. damage to your relationship? Yeah. There was a study in the UK on this and they looked at work without boundaries. And I know this is something that so many of my listeners are dealing with right now where the expectation, because we have our smartphones and, and our lives are, are always happening, you're on 24-7, yeah. there's the expectation from work that you're always available and you're always on. And this is definitely a generational shift. If you look back 10 or 20 years ago, yeah. we were not expected to be available That's right. After in our work. yeah in our off off time That's right. and this is really having an effect on your partner your children your friends mm -hmm. and it's having also a psychological effect on you uh, this article mm -hmm. suggested some some ways that you could keep from becoming overwhelmed because when you're always on you're always connected you're not really present with your partner That's right. but then it's also creating stress for you I, right. in this poll i was shocked rael because it said a third of people in britain reported having suicidal feelings mm -hmm. and three out of four felt overwhelmed or unable to cope in the past year because of stress that's right and a lot of this is become is coming from all of that information that's being hurled at you that's right and even as a dating coach, I have actually fired clients that yeah. were unable to create a boundary with work because I'm like, how are you going to get into a relationship if you're already married to your job? Right. Absolutely. So what do you how absolutely and as you, a neuroscientist, and you, you see how we're rewiring. You don't rewiring give yourself yourselves. an opportunity to, to decompress and, you know, you're leaving work, you're at work. You know, just say we just have a, a project and we're really stressed just for that project. Right. Uh, we start having arguments with our boss and everything, too. So you bring in that home as well. So you don't give yourself. Uh, I, I'm actually trying to write this book called um, a Traf traffic jam could save your marriage. Right. Because you have to use that time to decompress between work and home. Uh, so now, you know, listening to a, a, a DVD, learn French, you're my pillow, you're something. What? Something, right? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, learn something. Ladies, he's already that, taken, right? okay? Right? <laughs> <laughs> you learn something in between that time, but we don't, we don't allow ourselves to decompress. So we're bringing work home, and then we're still available. So we're still like answering 
not just the emails, but the phones too, you know, because then you have these bosses that's like, hey, you know, I need your help. I wanted to ask you something. And then not only that, but you're checking your email just in general. And even even just being on your phone yeah. in the bed yeah. is, is a bad idea. Uh, and it's, it's not even just the connection to yeah. work, but even just the light from right. your phone. Yeah can rewire your brain right. and it makes it harder for you That's to sleep. Right. The and color. To, the color. Speak yeah. on it. Speak on it. Well, you're the, people, you're no, the yeah. neuroscientist. The color blue. The color blue. Because mm -hmm. we don't really know that. And, um, and, and so people also, when you're working late too, there's a, um, there's a little function in your computer to tell your computer to change the color like after six or after seven. So it can change the mood, you know, of, of how you're, um, actually looking at the computer because like you said it'll keep you up and when you're in the bed you know it'll have a major effect on the brain yeah and I just went over this with my my husband because he was having trouble sleeping yeah. and I was like well every night before bed you do crossword puzzles online he's like obsessed with crossword puzzles I'm glad he has such a great vocabulary but it's yeah. like <laughs> yeah. it's a little excessive or he's like checking email and I said Phone's out of the room, yeah. and you need to shut it down, and not, don't, I was like, don't go on screens before bed. Yeah. And he did that for a few days, and he's like, thank you. I feel a lot better, and I, I've actually been been sleeping great. Yeah, so absolutely. just a word to the wise. Um, put the phones away. and That's right. Put them definitely, away. Definitely, when you're with your partner, make that a sacred space that you're connecting. Yeah. Well, uh, Iggy Azalea has uh, created quite a buzz this mm. week, because she she's had, like, like three or four single day relationships yeah, this year. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. She's I mean, I don't want to laugh, but it's it's kind of It's sad. kind of amazing though. Yeah. Because um on August 8th, she confirmed that she was dating Houston Texans wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. But then the next day, she tweeted out that she was single again. And I actually caught this. Producer Thomas found mm -hmm. the story, but I caught it on I follow her on Twitter. Oh, you saw and live? I saw, yeah, yeah, I saw this tweet go out and I went, oh no, we have to talk about this this week because she, I'm just going to quote her tweet. Yeah. She said, Men have this fantasy. They enter your life and magically you want, and magically want you to stop everything you're doing and pander to their version of how an acceptable woman acts. If I'm a hoe, because of the pictures I post, then let me hoe in peace. Uh, she has since deleted that tweet. <laughs> yes. um, I thought that that was an important message, yeah. however, yeah. and I think she should have left the tweet up. But okay, yeah. I think so, we know so the what reason did why. You get from it? Well, we know what happened in the relationship. Clearly, he right. wanted to control her, and Iggy Azalea is not one to be controlled and then deandre got in a fight in practice oh, right. yesterday yes. Yes, he did. so he might be having some feelings about the yeah. breakup and then now people are saying they saw her in miami with tyga and she now she's dating Tyga. we don't know what's going on she wow. said she's single again we don't know what's going on with her but i just think it's important to acknowledge what she said yeah. because this is a good message for women yeah, yeah. that don't change who you are That's right. to be with somebody. That's right. Absolutely. And even if you just announced yesterday that you were dating, if they are not okay with the person you are and wanting you to become something else, that's not the re relationship for you. Right. Right? No, absolutely. You're so right. As a man, so what, right. what what advice do you have to Iggy, for Iggy Azalea? Well, well, no. I mean, it's the exact same thing that you said. You shouldn't change for anybody. And you find people especially well thank goodness that it's her because if it was someone else that didn't have some celebrity status right they would probably like oh yeah yeah you're a football player you know i'll change what you what do you want me to do and i've always said too um you're the employer us men we're just <laughs> trying to get the job right? yeah right yeah, so you know the power lies in your hand Okay, well, the position is still available. Maybe uh, maybe she'll take to Tinder or Raya <laughs> to get her next applicant. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we have special guest Shannon and Cindy Kaysen, who will be giving us that real advice about how to make marriage work in today's world. I'm your host, Damona Hoffman. And by the way, if you like this episode, subscribe to the show, and you can get them the minute they post on Apple Podcast and Google Podcast. Rael and I will be back in just a moment. Hey, I have a secret for you. Everyone gets bored in the bedroom from time to time. 
And whether you're single or in a relationship, there's a way to spice things up at adamandeve.com. They have one of the largest catalogs of adult products around, from lingerie to things that go buzz. Adam and Eve has just what you need to revitalize your love life. And my friends at Adam and Eve have just the thing for you, a secret bonus. I can't tell you what it is, but I can tell you you're going to love it. And your partner will too, if you have one. Best of all, you can order online at adamandeve.com and they will ship your items to you in discreet packaging so the neighbors will be none the wiser. And if you use my promo code, shipping will be free. So go to adamandeve.com and enter the promo code GIFT21. You can get something for him, something for her, something for you both. And you will get a total of 10 free gifts if you use my code plus free shipping. So don't be shy. Live out your fantasy at adamandeve.com using the offer code GIFT21 at checkout. Welcome back to Dates and Mates. I am having a blast in here with my friend and co-host, Rael Sims, relationship scientist. Rael, we got to get real about yeah. relationships and yeah. marriage today. So yeah. let's invite our guest to the show, Shannon Kaysen. He's told stories all over the country. You've heard him on The Moth, on Snap Judgment. He has his own podcast, Homemade Stories, which is fantastic. And he also works on the WBE Chicago podcast, the Trouble with Shannon Kaysen. And Cindy Kaysen, his wife, is a successful real estate agent. She's involved in many social issues. And now they're joining us together. I love having couples on the show. Please give big smooches to Cindy and Shannon Kaysen. <laughs> hey, hey, how you doing, Damone? Oh, oh, I'm bad, good. Damona. And they're in Chicago? They are in Detroit, in, in Detroit, my home state. Yes. Hello, yes. Royale. Oh, Detroit. Hi. Okay. I know. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna get real I real today. I worked in Detroit for a while. We did a movie out there, uh, Bell Owl, right? Oh yes. Right, oh yes. You did a movie? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's yeah. all right. I like yeah. that. I love that. <laughs> yeah, my wife. She um, uh, produced a film called Rain for Showtime. How right? about that? Rain. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. We got to now check I have that to out. look it up. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I, I really enjoyed being there because I've always, you know, I do a little NASCAR racing, right? But they okay. Had the, they, had they have the a big race there. They had yeah. The there, and I was just going so crazy because I got the tickets from the mayor and all that, and I was like, "Ooh, wow!" You know, I was just <laughs> but like, a chance to see the race. The mayor? Who cares about the mayor? <laughs> we have Cindy and Shannon <laughs> Casey here. That's true. That's true. So <laughs> depend I, on which mayor, you know. What I'm right. Mayor, yeah. Yeah. This was a it long might be time an interesting ago. Story. This was a while ago. Right? <laughs> so I know Shannon, you're always putting the spotlight on telling other people's stories, but today I really want to get in deep on your own stories. And okay. the two of you, you guys have been together for a long time, but but uh, not every couple meets in a traditional way. And you guys have an interesting story on the way that you came together. Mm -hmm. Why don't yeah. you share yes, it with us? Uh, well, I, I'm a, I'm a I'm a compulsive gambler, <laughs> and uh. And Cindy was a, a what were your what was your job title? I, I was a VIP waitress hostess at the casino. Uh huh. Uh huh. So we uh, <laughs> that's where we met. You know. Oh, cool. <laughs> Wait, so, so the talk was, us through the the that initial meeting. Uh huh. So you want to go go with? Um, I was at work one day. And um, Shannon was at the blackjack table, but instead of playing blackjack, he was turned around away from the blackjack table, kind of slumped over and looking down like this. And I looked at him and well, me and my girlfriend looked at him and she was like, he's handsome. I'm like, yeah, but I'm hollering at him. So you're not hollering at him. I'm going to go holler at him. Oh, you, <laughs> you like staked your claim and you were like, Get oh, off. yeah, step yeah. off, lady. So, I got this what one. Happened. Yeah. And um, I just walked over to him and I handed him a bottle of water and I said to him, you would look so much better if you smiled. And I walked away and. That's how we met. Cindy, <laughs> Cindy, this is this is a prime case example of how I recommend that women initiate Absolutely. because everybody <laughs> thinks that if a woman makes the quote first move right. that it rewrites the rules of chivalry but you're living proof here that's right you, I mean I you say like it's like dropping like, the hanky you gave right. him the water and you walked away over with it yeah I just said something simple and I mean Granted, I worked as a VIP cocktail uh, waitress, so my uh, outfit was a little bit risque, 
Yeah, and then I, the and then my weave was unbelievable, <laughs> you know, all the way down my back. So it gave them something to look at. But my my <laughs> statement line was very basic and to the point, you know, yeah. and I just walked away and that was it. Shannon, what was it that caught your attention? Was it just the fact that she was so bold as to give you a bottle of water and walk away like that? Well, the thing is, she is she a waitress, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like the, the job in a sense. <laughs> but I could feel, I felt something more there. She was just like, you look better when you smile. And then it was on me. Like, the honest was on me to, to do something, you know, if I was interested or if I wasn't. So I, just, I did watch her walk away. And my wife <laughs> is a very beautiful woman. And I was like, wow, she, she said something to me. So I, uh, I won. Like I was down to my last hundred bucks at the fifty dollar blackjack table, and then I won like fifteen hundred bucks in that one shoe. Which I don't, you know, you shouldn't gamble because unless you got it and got control over it. But the thing <laughs> is, I walked to the to the uh, and got to my money, and I walked over back to her, and I didn't know, you know, because I didn't know if that was just she was just doing her job. So I'm like you know, thank you. And, uh, I, I, you know, is it, and you okay smiled because she told smiled? you yeah, to smile because right, right, right. I had won $1,500, right. you know, and I was oh. down, I didn't even have rent money. So I won and I went back and, and, uh, I asked for her number and she said she'd take mine. And I thought that that's always the brush off, you know, I take your number. So I gave her my card my job well, cause she didn't know who you were. You were, phone number. you were a compulsive and gambler. I, yeah, <laughs> she yeah, didn't know yeah. how she that was going to turn out. But she said she'll call me at noon the next day. And I was like, okay, well, it might, we might talk because she's saying the exact time that she's going to call me. And she did call at, wow. at noon. Okay, that's, that's really like cool. rule number yeah, two. Yeah. You guys are hitting all. Yes. See, you're basically relationship coaches. Because yeah. I also <laughs> say, Absolutely. don't just leave the window open yeah. of like, oh, I'll get your number and then I'll, we'll talk. Because right. that's when you never talk or you turn into a an endless chain of text messaging. But if you say, I'm gonna call you at noon, That's right. then you know that that person has to show up for you in that window That's right. and you better be available. And you That's were right. available. I called at like 12.06. Yeah, okay. you gotta make them sweat <laughs> yeah. a little yeah, bit, right? Little, right, right, right. Well, at least it wasn't the next day, right? Because that was a game that people play, right? It was like, yeah. oh, oh, you know, they it, don't don't call him. Don't call yeah, him. Yeah, the three day rule and all that. You know, the all three day dead. rule and all of that crap. You know, it's like, no. Don't take but I like your it. advice. I like that Steve you gave Harvey. him good advice and then you dropped the mic and she walked off. Yes, exactly. So, right. how long ago was that, Cindy and Shannon? That was in 2008. So, that was 10 years ago. And so much life mm -hmm. has happened. Kids. <laughs> yeah, you get kids, grandkids. A bunch of stuff has happened. Grandkids? Yeah. That time how do you have and grandkids? Then, uh, no. Well, I was married previously, so <laughs> I have a 28-year-old son and a 25-year-old son. But and you're 28. It's impossible. Them. Okay. You know, <laughs> it don't crack, but. <laughs> so between the two of them, um, it's five grandchildren. One was just born last Thursday, oh, a little boy. Wow. So Congratulations. Between the two of them, it's five. Hmm. They live in Albuquerque, though. Oh, my goodness. You have Far a... from us. Wow. <laughs> wow. You have a very full life. And I know you also both have your careers. And that's not easy, juggling juggling all of these people and dynamics and and having your own ambitions how do you how do you make it work when when the two of you maybe are in two different places i know shannon you're also traveling a lot for work how do, how does it work when you're when you're apart from each other and how do you make that time special when you are together yeah for me it's um i'm big on communication and sometimes we fall short. So, so uh, I, I like, I like, a, I like more communication than she probably likes. I like you to tell me. I'm like a Twitter person. I want to know. I'm going to take out the garbage. I'm going to, you know, do everything. And she's more, um, you know, we don't. She she doesn't have that same need. So we find a balance in that and try to communicate. So she, we talk about it a lot, communication a lot, because that's a very important thing to the relationship. But also we, we just enjoy special time together. So we have friends over and have drinks and those kind of things. You get to enjoy, you know, we enjoy time together, but then we, enjoy, I, I enjoy a lot of the, 
like relationship things even with others yeah. when others be involved yeah. and stuff i yeah. don't know yeah your part um that's my my thing just like the communication making sure we work on it you know continue and to work on it and then always like we're together. always checking in like if not almost every two weeks every month you know like you have like family okay. meeting yeah, I mean, because, you know, um, like Shannon says, he's the over communicator <laughs> and I'm basically like, OK, the six month goal is and I'll get back to you in six months. But Shannon's like, OK, what did you do today? What, what is our progress so towards right. that goal? Exactly. Exactly. Right, right. So um, I'm like, OK, it was said now I have to put action to it. But Shannon is always like, um, well, what is that action to it? What did you do to make the action? Which is nothing wrong with it. You know, it's sort of marriage um, is all, it's almost like a corporation. <laughs> it's like a corporation that you're running, the, the corporation right. of marriage. And I know for the two of you, it hasn't always been easy. Um, when I when I first met you last year, um, it was Shannon was on stage sharing some clips from Homemade Stories, um, your mm -hmm. podcast, and you were talking about a really trying time in your relationship where you were dealing with infidelity. And mm -hmm. first of all, just even being able to, I just honor you for being able to even talk about that because that's something that right. a lot of people keep as a secret and you know, right. secrets Absolutely. can eat us alive. But um, if you could just give us a, a little sense of, how that that um, incident really strengthened your re relationship and how you were able to overcome it and make your bond stronger after. I, I think the thing of, uh, so infidelity hurts either which way you do it. I mean, either which way it happens. If And it happened for us on both sides. And this was before marriage, so this was during the engagement. But um, the thing is, is just i knew once we got into it and i had certain vision so i think vision is important in, in any relationship like i have a vision for our relationship and did i want to let this vision go because i'm upset or because i my emotions are overwhelmed and i i didn't want to let the vision go and that's what kept me and it may be different things for for both individuals but for me it was like man i don't want to let the vision that i have for our relationship and our family go because of this emotional thing we're going through and once you can go through it you do toughen just like with anything you know you you break a muscle down and it, it gets stronger but it's still one of them things that you have to constantly develop but uh, but I knew we would be stronger if we could make it through it. And then we we found a different level of communication as we went through it. So, can you explain what your vision that the when you mentioned the vision? What what does that look like? What what did the vision look like? Well, we didn't we didn't start on on you know you talking about started from the bottom. Now we're here. It was like <laughs> you know I was down to my last hundred bucks at a blackjack table. And that's where we met. And, through losing my home, losing job, yeah. losing, and then losing and my all that my kind of son's stuff. graduating high school, and I'm starting over with a family because I'm getting pregnant at the age of 35, mm. you know, and I'm a cocktail waitress, you know, so literally starting over, mm. um, mm. trying to even make the decision. I'm 35 years old. Do I want to have a child when my children are graduating from high school? And me you were almost home free been together. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, this man has only been dating for four or five months, literally, right. you know, so do I want to make that investment? So it's literally starting over and trying to buckle down and making a commitment, you know. Under yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I, I do want to ask, yeah. because, you know, as a relationship coach, and I'm sure, Rael, you, you probably see this too, some people get so attached to the vision that it clouds their ability to see what's really going on. Mm -hmm. And so I imagine there must have been a moment where uh, it wasn't just the vision, where it was about, well, this happened for a reason. So let's address the root cause mm -hmm. that made both of us want to want to be with someone else and see if we can repair that to repair the relationship. Yeah. Wasn't there? So, a, 
I it's mean, bigger well, than my root cause was just, um, I don't know, exploration. Which, which was first? Um, which was first? What do you mean? You're getting first? all, like, real detailed here. <laughs> <laughs> right? I want all the juicy. Who, who did it first, though? Was it Shannon or Cindy? Well, it was, it was happening the same time. Si simultaneously, same time. Same time. right? Okay. I had I had went to New York. What, what had happened? I had an opportunity to go to New York mm -hmm. right when we got engaged for a few months. And when I went to New York, I went to New York with the thing. I'm just a single man in New York, not an engaged man in New York. So that kind of life, that kind of thinking, and that kind of activity. Mm -hmm you're not even thinking about the people who I was messing around with. So in my story on homemade stories, the cheaters episode, I talk about hurting other people in the process of, you know, even hurt my wife. So, so it's like the people mm. who I'm dating at the time, they may be thinking of a relationship and I'm not being forthright or being honest with anybody, you know, and, and, um, but it was at the same time while I was in New York, she was seeing old flames in, <laughs> in old. Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, oh, no, yeah. sometimes it's a oh. part of like feeling that that distance and, and maybe it's a re reaction to that. But I want to I want to end the interview on a high note before we move on to answering questions from our listeners. I hope you guys will stick around for that. Yeah. Um, what what is like the one thing I know, Shannon, you said communication is key. Cindy, what is the one thing that that you would advise for people who are listening that want to build the long-term relationship and the kind of life that you and Shannon Don't have. take advice from your single friends. <laughs> Don't take advice from people that have no model of a successful relationship. Well Don't said. take yeah. advice from anybody that you cannot too. look directly in their life and see yeah. any type of success. And yeah. that's what separated my friends, my real friends yes. from people that I'm like, uh, you're not even my friend because you're telling me what I want to hear right. instead of what I need to hear. That's right. Absolutely. And so that right there, I, I lost a lot of so-called friends because, you know, uh, misery likes company. Yeah. You know, and I hung up on some friends that were not telling me what I wanted to hear and had to pick the phone back up and be like, you know what? Thanks for telling me what I needed to hear instead of what I wanted to hear. Right. All right. You know? Well, we have so, we have a lot of people who need advice right yeah, now. So yeah. so uh, don't take advice from your single friends, but do take advice from us. We have a segment that is produced in partnership with the Textbird app, where you can get crowdsourced advice for for your drama. Technically dating. Okay. Our first question um, comes to us from a gal who is 36 she says my boyfriend wants to get married in one year i feel that it is too long to wait we've already been dating six months how should i tell him she's been dating six months guys she is 36 so she's feeling that ticking you cindy you were talking a moment ago about being 35 and and starting right. starting a new family then do you think she should be pushing this forward quicker than a year a, a no. year feels like a good no, chunk of time not at all play, you got to plan the whole wedding and stuff too, <laughs> she's right? only been dating right. for six Absolutely. months i mean for me i think that if and i don't know i would never say that i'm dating somebody for six months and then we're going to be married right away um we've been together for 10 years and we're still trying to figure each other out you know so six months i think is a little bit too soon uh saying one year from now uh, I mean, if that's what he wants, I think the timeline is okay. But mm. even with us, like our friends was like, well, you've been together for so long. Why aren't you married yet? But both of us have previously been married. So it wasn't a rush. We wanted to try to figure each other out before we wanted to make that long time commitment. Mm. I see it both it ways. Like sometimes people who are, you know, in their mid thirties or forties are in a rush to, to, to get married right, and like right. to make it happen. And then yeah. other times, like you said, they're like, well, I've done this before. I'm not necessarily looking to That's get married again. Point. That's you don't an need point. You're, you're right. Because somebody who's already been married would said, well, I need to detox. I need to cool out for a minute. I've been there, done that. And then some people who have never been married before and also thinking about, well, I would like to have a family. 
And yeah, she's 36. That yeah. biological clock that is biological. ticking. I think well, she's. See, I'm so glad you she's said it. Speaking, not say it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> she's speaking directly from her ovaries at this moment. Right. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. She's not thinking no. about the long term. Yeah. And I feel like a year is a is a good yeah. amount of time, especially when you've only been together six months. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm going to move on to our next question. This comes to us from a female from Florida. She said. Am I the only one who's ever fallen for someone that is way out of their league? I like this guy, but I'm 70% sure he doesn't like me. Could you give me tips on how to get a guy to like you or at least be interested? Shannon, I'm going to go to you first. Who, me? Yeah, oh, yeah, you're see, a guy. How could, a gu- look, how could look, she get... Is it's a guy? This a is a girl. She's a girl. It... She she has a crush on a guy who she feels is out of her league. She's seventy percent sure he doesn't like her, but that's thirty percent that he might. Yeah, but but the one thing is, like I, I like to think of, uh, you can always like if you if you like a person more than the other person like you, it's a it's you can feel it. You know, um, sometimes you gotta. You got to do strategic things sometimes in relationships because Cindy was way out of my league. I saw Cindy. I'm like, man, this uh, I've never had a woman this beautiful and this this got this much stuff going on for. Her. But I played it cool. <laughs> I acted. I acted like I knew what I was doing. I acted yeah. like I was already there. And sometimes you just got to do that. So, so like if you're a person out of that league, be unavailable sometimes that that increases mark yeah. that increases your value in some way so i i, I would play you baby a little bit i'm a little <laughs> unavailable i bring up a, so so me strategically to to make you in my your mind see me as a as an equal <laughs> <laughs> but I so much of it strategically you know so much of it's per- right so. it's perception though like yeah. that's her idea that he's out of her league, but he may be thinking the other thing. And they that, say, yeah. Ryle, they say that in a relationship, you should always feel like you're the lucky one, yes, right? Absolutely. I feel like I'm the lucky one. Yeah. But that's good. I know. I'm right? the lucky one. That's good. I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure your wife would say the yeah, same thing. Yeah. So, do you have any tips, relationship yeah. scientist Ryle, on how to um, how to get his attention, though? Yeah, well, you know, just not, uh, well, you know, it was part of, of, of what Shannon said, too. Um, you know, just, well, I was going to say, you can ignore him a little bit, <laughs> you know, when he's like, hey, wait a minute, I, I usually get all the attention, you know. But she could also drop the hanky, like like uh, like Cindy kind of did, like yeah. give him the water and then walk away, then walk at least, because you might just not be visible yeah. to him at all. And uh, well, there's actually too. a study this week that came out in L.A. Times that um, on dating apps, men and women are both trying to level up, and most people are messaging people that by not just your own perception, but based on response rates and the data of the dating site yeah. are a little out of their league. But, right. you know, sometimes it happens. You got to yeah. you got to go for it. You, you have to go for it, though. Okay. You have to do something like you said. If I Wait, can drop a handkerchief. You're gonna, yeah. OK, I have like a really I have a sort of different kind of question. Uh-oh. Question of a different color here. <laughs> um, this one comes to us from uh, uh, a gal who says. <laughs> <laughs> she says she's found a vibrator in her mom's room and she really doesn't know how to feel about it. She says, I don't know if I should confront her or just let it slowly kill me inside. Your parents, Cindy and Shannon, <laughs> what do you have advice? What advice do you have for a young lady who found a vibrator in her mom's room? <laughs> what was she doing in her mother's room? Looking Ooh. around? Good point. That's good point. I mean, if my child ever tried to confront me or anything, I would just look at them like they were crazy and ask them, why were you in my room? (laughs) You know, you don't want to see something you got there. I mean, you're going to find a whole bunch of stuff you don't want (laughs) to see. You're going to look at our drawers. (laughs) 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 Uh, I know I'm at the point where I need to get a lock on some stuff. don't, Don't go into the closet. (laughs) <laughs> You're gonna see don't a whole lot. <laughs> confront her, don't and confront her. Her mom is a human. Don't wow, confront her. Her mom is a sexual person. No, that's exactly. And she's born. She's, she's alive. She's the, so she's the child. I'm, that's the parent. So you don't confront her. That's not. That's none of your business. And you know. just exactly. Hey, yeah. people, your parents are having sex more than likely. Yeah. They're having sex. 
They're having Absolutely. sex with themselves. They're having sex with, with it. You gotta have to bear with it. <laughs> yep, right? it's something that's gonna yeah. happen. Even if they yeah. said they only had it once, that's right. <laughs> they never have had an orgasm. And, you know, even though no. it might sound gross when we even think about grandmother and grandpa, you know that. Yeah, it's definitely gross. Right. But it's yeah. de- See, it definitely it definitely happened. <laughs> right, right. And never okay. touch, never touch the rag in your dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shannon! Don't so ever touch that little. <laughs> <laughs> that is a homemade story for sure. Place. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yes. That's a good one. That's good advice. The trouble with touching your dad's right. r- the rag in your dad's <laughs> If it's not in the restroom, don't okay. touch it in the bedroom. <laughs> okay, we right. got off topic. We got off topic. We need we have people that really need advice here. We have a female who's 24. She says, it's so difficult coming face to face with loneliness. Yeah. Like not having anyone there to talk with. I was on dating apps for so mm. long, only deleting them when I found someone. But now I don't have anyone. And I deleted them as I was using the attention to validate my self-worth and I've and always have someone to talk with. It sucks not having anyone and the only attention I get from guys is unwanted and sexually driven. How do I make myself understand I don't need men and I have value and I am special? Rael, hmm. you're the relationship scientist. I'm gonna go to you first. Well, this is like a multi-layered question, yeah, but this yeah, is something is. that dating apps are doing for people. They're they're getting addicted to that feeling, and then you realize there's nothing there. Yeah, yeah, and and you know that's why I feel bad about her feeling uh, asking that you know to to convince herself that she doesn't need a man, you know. But that's not the point, because you know as Meslow's laws, we all have a need to belong. Um, that's just human nature, right? You know, so. Um, I, I, I hate when people feel like, you know, I don't need, but, you know, it's it's natural. But also, uh, I hate to feel where loneliness is an epidemic. And, mm-hmm. and, and it's, it's, it's really, like in China, we have senior citizens actually going to the store to steal just to get caught, just to go to jail to be with their friends so they're not wow. lonely, right? Wow. So, you know, that's really, really deep. Um, so, you know, I just, I, 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 you know, find yourself doing other things right now. And when you when you find yourself feeling lonely, there's so many other things that you can do right now. And I guess, you know, one of the best things of being single is getting to know self again, getting to understand self, because a lot of people want to jump into another relationship as a codependent, mm-hmm. you know? So it's really good, especially when you're feeling that lonely feeling, right? And yeah. you just got out of a relationship or you can't find love from the dating apps and everything. That dating apps, the dating apps will really That'll have suck. A- suck your it'll, self-worth it'll suck your self-worth if you let yourself get caught up in yeah, yeah. i would say she does need to join a community and yeah, you absolutely. know like i'll i'll be totally totally transparent like this week i was working on the relaunch of the season six of of dates and mates and i i work solo most of the time and i was yeah. like in my house like on the grind and i'm like i i was feeling a little bit lonely this week so i went to yoga i went to Mm -hmm. yoga every day this week i'm going to yoga after this and because i was like that's my community and that's where i feel like i belong and it's not about like getting the attention from another person but i want it cindy i want to get your take because um i imagine being a cocktail waitress you said you wore like the skimpy outfits i'm sure in that situation you got unwanted sexually driven attention from men Oh, uh, in this one case, it worked out, but <laughs> I'm sure there was a, there was a lot that one was wanted. But I'm sure from yeah, a lot of men you didn't want it. How did you handle that? I mean, um, I've gotten that type of attention my entire life because um, I modeled previously also, mm. and so a lot of times I'm oblivious to people making advances to me, or I'm oblivious to unwanted stares. Shannon a catch it, friends around me a catch it, but I try to just stay tunnel vision so that it doesn't offend me. But um, as far as the young lady goes, loneliness is real and it's serious. And she has to come to the point where she has to understand that you should not look at anybody else to validate you. And like you said, you have to find a community Mm -hmm. to um, be attached to. And as a Mm -hmm. single person, um, I guess it's easy. Like I go on Facebook 
and just push events and see everything that's happening in my city just to try to be around people when I'm bored, right. you know? And so it's other ways to combat that. I'm totally old school. <laughs> I don't like texting people. I want to pick up the phone and hear a voice on the Absolutely. other end. You know, so I like that interaction that way. And yeah. so I don't know if I really do a dating app. I would go out and try to meet yeah, you people. Old, you you old, know, old school. yeah, you I'm really, people. yeah. I, but I think using your loneliness to, to find purposeful other things yeah. to do. Yeah. And know, so yeah. it's, it's, I think it's easier, more easier said than mm -hmm. done. But um, you have mm -hmm. to find different ways to, um, project that energy to make it a positive before right. it like really sucks you into a depression. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what about you, Shannon? Any advice on overcoming no, I say, loneliness? I say, I say use that loneliness to find purposeful action. You know, find things mm -hmm. that's purposeful for the person, but also join in those communities because once you when you, it's it's a it's a slippery slope. You you feeling lonely, you get lonelier. You feel lon you get lonelier. But to find some community that you could be a part of, engaged in, and then who knows, but not putting the pressure on being in that community to find someone, just enjoying it. And you'll find when you're enjoying stuff, that, I, I never saw Cindy had trouble finding people, honestly, in your, no. in your lifestyle. Time. But I don't think you really, you don't really even like be you're not on the you're not on the prowl no but right. it, the, the prowl come to you in a sense you know right. and, and i think that 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 happens for a lot of people like if i'm chasing money money is running as fast as possible from me but when i'm not thinking about it and am i just in the essence of purpose it's like i can't it's i can't even handle all the opportunities so it's, <laughs> yeah it's a it's a, yeah. it's a funny it's way true. that that a works yin and yang yeah. yes yeah. well i really appreciate you being here to share your stories with us and and uh be a part of our community at dates and mates and uh just to remind you all you can hear shannon on homemade stories and on wbez chicago's the trouble with shannon case and he's a fantastic storyteller and you can follow him at shannon Kaysen, uh on all the social medias and Cindy thank you so much for being here as well thank you, can, you for having me and you can follow her on Jacinda Kaysen J-A-C-I-N-D-A-C-A-S-O-N thank you for being here thank, thank you. you appreciate you yeah. and yeah. Rael it's uh it's been real having yes. you here Rael yes, absolutely. real talk before we go I did have like a little PSA to do though okay. uh, because I've been reading through the textbook questions and you know we get all of our questions for technically dating from the textbook app unless you've emailed us questions we get some of them from there too but as I'm reading through the textbook questions and scrolling through social media I see a lot of people in pain today because their relationship is ended or they couldn't attract the the love that they wanted yeah and I, I have to do a PSA, so please, Producer Thomas, put 60 seconds on the clock because I need to talk to people about why you need to stop saying you want to die because your relationship is over. Mm. I love helping people find love, and having a relationship end or an unrequited crush is devastating. And I know this because I've been there so many times. I've been disrespected, passed over, one night standed, depressed over relationships not going the way that I wanted. But I'm speaking to you from the other side now, and I can tell you that it gets better. If only the 21-year-old me had known that I would fall in love with a man who's just my type, who would inspire me, who would support me, who'd be an incredible dad, who would put me in our dream home and give me the, the this fantasy life that I didn't even think was possible. If I had known what was ahead of me, I would, it would have saved me a hell of a lot of tears. And I would have not put up with half-assed relationships, bad dates, and self-doubt that consumed me each time one of my crushes failed. And to see so many people on TechSpert and social media who are putting so much emotional weight on the now and have no idea what's ahead of them, it breaks my heart to see someone with a broken heart saying their life isn't worth living because of a failed relationship. You're so much more than that. So here's the PSA. If you are truly depressed, please don't put it on social media. Get help and call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. If you're not at that point, though, please just try to put it in perspective and know that you're not the sum of your failed relationships and you will love again. That's wow. it for episode 225 of Dates and Mates. 
I'd love to hear what your dating challenge is. Which segments are your favorites? Who would you love to hear on a future show? You can email me at Demona at DemonaHoffman.com or leave me a voicemail, 424-246-6255. Don't forget to subscribe to the show. Please subscribe. Tell a friend. If there's somebody that you know that needed that message at the end, please share this episode with them. And if you subscribe to the show, you'll get all of the future episodes the minute they're available. I'm Damona Hoffman. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Damona Hoffman. Thank you so much to Rael Sims, the yes. relationship scientist. Thank you so much. Relationship scientist, Rael, R-Y-E-A-L, dot com. Yes. Hopefully you'll join us again soon. Yes, I sure will. And until next week, I wish you happy dating. <laughs>